as you are uh, sort of sitting there waiting for, for things to start, uh, what you're going to be doing is cutting out little bird models. And um, you're going to have two. Um, a, uh, there will be a, a, a raptor and a gull. And you want to uh, print those out, cut them out. And for now, there's a bunch of little kind of fold here places. Um, all you have to do is fold the body up fold the tail out, and fold the wings down. For now, let's not put the additional creases in the wings. If you already have, it's okay. But if you haven't, just leave them, just leave them straight for now. But you've got to, um, uh, and if you don't um, have a printer, just, you can, you can watch. But at some point, find a friend with a printer because these are fun. And you can also make a mobile out of them and kind of spend them spinning around your room. You can make a flock. OK, so let's um, go ahead and get started. Welcome, everyone, to the last class in this series. Today, we're going to be covering how to draw raptors in flight, um, which is a very exciting topic. I'm, at least I'm super excited. And um, you know, thank you so much, John, for you know, teaching all of these different bird drawing classes um, and making them available to everyone for free. So um, as always, I'll just remind everyone, please support Jack if you can, um, if you buy art supplies through his store. You know, I know a lot of you have already bought his book, but um, if you buy supplies through his store, it also supports him as well. Um, and if you want to help out Audubon, you can always donate to us as well. All right, so let's not take up any more time. Take it away, Jack. All righty. Hey, everybody. It, it is good to be back with all of you. Um, today, raptors in flight. Now, um, the way you draw raptors in flight is the diff different than the way you draw the little songbirds and stuff in flight. Um, the little ones that are going, <laughs> with the, like if you're drawing a wren in flight, or if you've seen a dipper flying up, the, up a creek, um, uh, essentially the way that I draw those, we'll just start with that because it's actually a lot easier. The wings are moving so flat, fast you can't see them. So what I do is I just sort of draw, you know, a little, here's the little dipper body, um, kind of in, in profile with maybe a beak that's way too big. All right, and then I just, I just go and draw a blur in the middle and that or maybe a mer, right? So there's a mer, right? So just, there's a blur in the middle because the wings are moving faster than your eye can see. Don't, don't have an expectation of yourself that you're somehow going to get these stop motion eyes or a photographic memory. It doesn't work very well. Um, but for raptors, you actually have a fighting chance of being able to draw what you see because you can actually see what you want to draw. They're going to be holding their wings out soaring. So soaring birds, they're holding still more or less. Yeah, they're circling, but we'll deal with that. Um, so the bird's out there and it's circling. And what you can find that you can do is that as you watch it, it's going to be taking up all of these different positions, right? So what you do is just imagine its little circle up there as a clock. And what you do is maybe, you know, it's at this o'clock and you kind of look at what you can see. The bird artist Keith Hansen taught me kind of a really cool trick. What I do is you stare at the, 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 the bird and you kind of wait till it's going to be in that place. And then he closes his eyes and opens them for just a moment like the shutter of a camera. And then, wink closes them again. And for a moment, this one little pose of the bird is going to be burned onto your retina. And what you're going to do is you're going to take that image and put it down. Now, at this point, the bird's moved on to this next position, right? So if you look back at the bird, you're going to see this other position and it's going to confuse you. So what you do is you sort of figure out where in the circle you want it. You're going to open your eyes, click, get it. Look at that little moment that's just sort of burned there temporarily on your retina and make a few marks down on your paper. And then what you do is as it's circling around, let's say this is where you do your little bleep, right? 
Now you're drawing, you're drawing, you're drawing. It's circling around. And when it comes back to the same position, you go bling, again, and you look up at the bird. So you try to get it in the same part of the circle and that will more or less have the same position. So that's, that's how I look at things that are, are moving. I'm just gonna choose a little moment, a little moment out of all those possible moments and get that onto my piece of paper. That little close your eyes, blink trick works really get well because you're then not distracted by all the stuff that came before. You're not distracted by all the stuff that came after. And again, mad props to Keith Hansen, bird artist of Bellinas for that very useful trick. So now you want to start transferring what that little image that you get to a piece of paper. Having an understanding of the bird's structure and some of the ways that that shape is going to change with different positions and postures of the wings, um, the way that foreshortening or perspective is going to work on it. Um, this is really, really helpful. So you're gonna take that little blink technique, you're gonna combine it with, so three things, you've got blink technique, you're gonna have an understanding of structure and the third is, you're going to have an understanding of how birds foreshorten. Let's go there now. We're gonna start with structure, and then we're gonna open up the can of worms of foreshortening birds in flight. Um, so I am going to show you a, um, let's see here. I'm gonna share a screen. Um, I would like to, uh, so first in this, just send a shout out and a big thanks to um, Vivek Canzotti of uh, seeingbirds.com. He's a master bird photographer and has uh, given permission to me and you to be able to use his photographs to inspire your artwork. Um, and so you can go to that website for lots of uh, sort of wonderful bird um, photos. The, um, so all the photos that you see are from that, that site today. Um, let's just take a look at bird structure. I'm gonna take a look at some birds from below. All right, so here are a few birds from below. And by the way, I'm gonna be showing you lots of species today. Um, what you want to do is not get wrapped around the axle about drawing, you know, what species is this, what species is that, but just keep your eye on the ball of the general structure and the commonalities between these different, between these different, uh, um, the birds which we're, we're looking at. So when we look at a bird from below, what we're seeing is there is a big core of a body And, uh-oh, the spinning wheel of delay. So let me see if I unplug that. Yeah, here we go. Okay, we're back on, back online. So here's, here's my body. I've got um, down on the back end, there is, basically you have, for your body, you've got a little oval. On the back end, there's, a little box of undertail coverts. On the front end, there's a little cone of a bird's head. And the tail is going to be a triangle that you would imagine kind of starting here and sticking down. And the wings are going to fall across the body of the bird. Let's take a close look at these wings. We're gonna look at this bird over here on the side. And I want to, when I look at the bird's wings, I'm going to divide it into two sections, the primary and the secondary feathers. With the bird's wings are slightly bent, like this one right here, it's easier to see the distinction between these. Primary feathers are a triangle of feathers 
out at the tip of the wing. And the secondary feathers are a block of feathers, a rectangle closer to the body. So very quickly, you have a triangle attached to a rectangle. Now, the feathers in the triangle fan like this. So if I'm looking at this, so these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, the ten feathers at the tip here are my primary feathers. And if you look at them, they're all kind of a fan uh, moving towards this little point right in here. And so all those feathers come in like that. Now look at the secondary feathers here. The secondary feathers are coming down more or less straight down this way. As they get in towards the body, slight little turn in, but most you can think of those coming down straight. So take a look at this skull needle over here and see if you can spot its primary feathers and its secondary feathers. And then we'll go in and count. There are 10 primaries on these raptors. And so we can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So there's the boundary between my primaries and my secondaries. Notice that this last, the last few primary feathers, they look a lot like secondary feathers. All right. Um, so the first few are fingery. The bottom few are shaped very similarly to secondary feathers. So fingery out at the tip, and then different species will have different numbers of fingery primary feathers. So there we have a little bit of the structure of how these birds' wings are put together. You want to think of those primaries moving as a block and those secondaries moving as a block. One last thing that I want to point out is that these, let's look at the golden eagle on the right here. Notice that because they are all aiming for a target up here in the bird's wrist, this feather here is coming in like this. This feather here is coming in like this. They are not doing this. See, here's my wing coming out. See that? So this is a common mistake. People will see this and then draw these feathers parallel to each other. Another mistake that people will make on drawing these wings is that they will draw it this way. Let's say, imagine that this is gonna be the zone where I have my secondaries. Here's the zone where I have my primaries. What they do is they draw them all kind of fingering. to there, and then we come in here with our secondaries. The problem with this approach is that it misses the fact that the last half of these primary feathers are shorter and not fingering. They're not notched. So if you want kind of a quick and dirty bird wing, you're going to have your secondary feather zone coming up. And what are you going to do for your primaries? You're going to come out flat and then go into, you're aiming these 
right up in here. A few feathers there. So you see how you get this zone of primary feathers that are aiming towards that target. Then you have a zone of secondary, I mean, the more primary feathers, and then your secondary feathers are going to attach to that. So if you want a more sophisticated but still kind of fast wing, I'm going to have my secondary feathers come out and that would be a better quick and dirty wing. Let's see those little notes without the birds. So my, my framework here, when I am just based on this, let's just put together again um, a really simplified bird in flight. I'm going to do this one flying up and down my page here. Here's the central axis of its body, and here's the core of its body. I'm going to give it a little cone head, and I'm going to give it a box of undertail coverts. Up in here is my wing target, my tail target, and I'm going to have, I'm going to make this sort of a broad beauty of a tail out like that. Then I'm thinking of my wings coming across my bird. There is a portion that is going to be secondaries and portion that is primaries. So let's say my, this much of my bird is secondaries. My primaries, I generally think of them As, as a triangle out at the tip. Target. This, I'm going to draw the bird's anatomy in here. Underneath here, there's a shoulder, and it goes down to an elbow, and it comes up to a wrist right in here. The bird then has a hand right there. So the secondary feathers are attaching in here onto that forearm. And the primary feathers are attaching onto that hand. That's why this is the zone where your primary feather target is. Because of this, you also sometimes see a slight curve up here on this front leading edge of the wing. That can be curved, or if the wing is stretched out more, it'll be perfectly straight. Then you get up to the hand, you sometimes see it perfectly straight across, Sometimes there's even a slight kind of bump up where you get to the bird's hand. So I'm going to put in some lines there. And we'll do that trick again on the primary feathers on the left hand side, where we're going to say we have I want to, my, my feathers to That's a reasonable, quick and dirty, fast raptor shape, seen directly from below. We can make this a little bit more nuanced. Let's actually go back for a moment to those birds here. Let's take a look at the underside of those wings one more time. And this time, just notice a little bit more about the shapes that you see on the underside. There is So I've got, we'll look at this phrygianus hawk on the left hand side. Um, notice you've got your primaries, you have your secondaries, and above, on top of that, out in here, 
there is a dome of feathers resting on top of the primaries, and there is a wedge of feathers resting on top of the secondaries. That is the covert feather zone of the birds. Covert feathers are small feathers and they cover up the front part of the wings. So the, you see that same thing going on here on this golden eagle. Let's actually switch colors so it's a little bit easier to see here. Golden eagle, here are your coverts on the underside of the primaries. They call those, of all crazy things, primary coverts. And then here are your covert feathers on the underside of the, of the secondaries. They call those secondary coverts. So we've got our primary coverts and secondary coverts. Um, one last thing that you might want to add if you are, if you're totally down with this level of anatomy, we can add one more thing to it. If you're feeling overwhelmed by bird underwing anatomy, you can stop right here and you'll be okay. But if you want to be really cool, we can add in the axillaries. So what the axillaries are, are a zone of feathers that are in sort of this armpit region right here of the bird. And um, so if you want your underside just to be, and so those are sometimes, they're, they're differently marked. They change the, if there, some birds like a prairie falcon will have really dark wing pits in there. Um, and it just sort of will help you sort of think about just a, one more little level of structure on the underside of the bird. We jump back to this bird. And if we want, we can add those in. Um, we have We have our zone out here of primary coverts. We're gonna have our zone here of secondary coverts, and I'm gonna have a zone here for my axillaries. This, this model is going to be really useful for blocking in your bird and thinking about your bird. What we're gonna do now is we are going to take this little model of the bird, and we're going to start to move it around, start to tip it and turn it in our heads. So to do this, I am going to jump over to our little, actually, before we do, I'm going to stop my share. You see me again? I hope so. Here's the even simpler bird model. Yellow is the body, the red is the wings. What we've been doing is looking at the bird just like that, straight on the underside. But also this is useful for keeping away the vampires. So here we go, bird on the underside. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start just by changing the angle of the bird and foreshortening the wings. So if the bird's flying sideways, remember yellow's the body, and those wings are side on to you, you don't get to see the wings. Most often when they're soaring, you're going to see something like this. So as the birds are turning in the air, the apparent length of the wings is going to change dramatically dramatically. So let's go over to the bird cam right now and we're going to see um, everybody uh, there, there's at the start of the chat um, there is a uh, there's a place where you can download a model of of a hawk and download a model of a gull and if you don't have those at this point that's okay but you will want to point those out because part of your homework is going to be playing with those. We are now going to jump over to real cam and let's see here. Takes a moment for my 
camera to recognize that there is this neat new handy camera. Aha, there it is. Let's go there now. Right, there it is. That's the paper model. And you've got one too, um, or you will have one. And this is the, just the, the, the view that you get when you are, um, when you look at the bottom view of the bird. But if the bird rocks and rotates, let me get these, if the bird rocks and rotates, then the apparent length of those wings gets shorter and shorter and shorter. The more that it turns, the shorter that view of the wings gets. So also notice when I rock the bird, here in this view, you see kind of a smooth curve here. But when I turn the bird, turning the bird, look at the shape of this wing and look at how pronounced the bump is on the back side of those secondary feathers. You see that big sort of swell out? That is what happens when you take this amount of curve and compress it into a smaller area. Any little change in that contour becomes much more pronounced to us. So when you're looking at the bird, so notice that the whole wing appears shorter and that the curvature, especially in that secondary zone and going into that flattened part of the primary zone, it's this big, it looks much more bulbous. But because we're used to drawing the birds from this view, we will tend to draw it flat. Now let's turn the bird towards us. If the bird rocks up is coming towards us, we see, we see the full length of the wings, but they become narrower and also apparently straighter. Notice that from this view, the wings feel very much like a straight plank, a straight board. So I'm not seeing that big bulge on the back side of the secondaries. Now, let's go back to the share screen. And we'll look at some photographs as we start to take our birdie and rock its world. All right. Oh, not you. I want you. Yes, that's right, you. Okay, so over here on the side, I have a photograph of the wing of a golden eagle. And all I've done is gone in and with Photoshop, squinched it down so that it is just that same photograph compressed. And when you do that, you can see the same phenomenon of that what looked straight, whoops, what um, where am I? I'm here, I'm here. Okay. What looked straight here, we're now seeing as this bulge on the back. And let's also look at what happens to the fingering. The fingering looks much more kind of back, instead of more outward slanted, it feels much more kind of backwards slanted. Um, so that what it, what it happened is we've taken this whole fingering zone, when we compress it down, look at that change. So what you're getting is a secondary feather zone that has a bulge in it. 
And we're getting a primary feather zone with short and very kind of backwards pointing in here, little primary feathers. So that helps us think about foreshortening that wing. So that's one factor that's going, going to be going on. So we're going to be taking the wing and we're going to be foreshortening the wing. But wait, there's more. Because we are now going to start to turn the bird at different angles. So actually something that will be very helpful for this is my cross, all right? Here's the bird. Here's the bird as seen from the underside. But if I tilt the bird towards you and turn it at an angle, notice that here, these are right angles, four right angles, 90, 90, 90, 90. I tilt the bird towards you or away from you and then point it off towards the corner, right? Look at these angles now, no longer 90 degrees, right? So we expect the head and the wings I mean, to be at a 90 degree angle. They are if you're looking at the bottom view, but whoop, you turn it for, towards, if it's coming towards you or away from you at an angle, straight towards, straight towards you at an angle, yes, 90 degrees, but, yeah? Okay, don't panic, don't panic. We can handle this. But this, knowing this is going to help you avoid a bunch of mistakes. People constantly, because we know that this should be a right angle because we've seen the bird diagram. We made our bird diagram. We want to draw it this way. And then there's a bird kind of cruising along. We're like, ah, 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 ah. Right, so, right? Let's check out those photographs now. We're gonna look at the angle of the head body, so the body angle compared to the wings across birds that are coming towards you and going away from you. Let's see, where is that? It's right over here. And there they are. Boom. All right, so here we are. And I'm gonna get a new color. I'm going to get a light purple. That'll be good. All right. So look at this. Here is my body angle. Nope. That's not my body angle. That. Look at this. This is my body angle. Nope. I want that color. What about this one? Here's my body angle. Here's my body angle. And here's my body angle. Nah, eh, maybe that's not quite right. Let's try this maybe a little bit more off like that. All right, so those are the directions to my body. Now let's look at what the wings are doing here. Turn off the birds. You too. And look at that. So they are not at right angles. Isn't that cool? All right. So very often when there's a bird that's flying and it's at a, coming at an angle, not just square on, this little T is a very helpful thing to start to kind of get to some marks on the paper. It's a very helpful mark. What is the direction of the body? What is the direction of the wings? Let's take a closer look at that with this turned off, and notice that the two on the left, the two on the left are coming towards you, the two on the right are going away from you. And when we look at the angle marks, there's really no difference between these, right? I've got a, a sloping line that goes from upper left to lower right, for the wings and then a bar kind of coming up. So what's the deal with when it's coming towards you, when it's coming away from you? Well, 
it's going to be, let's check it out. Can you spot it? Why, well, yes, you can. Key difference is? That's right. Which wing is closer to you? So if the wing that is uh, on the one that is going, so this is four birds going to the right. The ones coming towards you, the wing that is above the body line is closer to you. And the wing for ones that are flying away from you, you're looking down on the back. The wing that is below the body line pointing out to the right, that one is um, the one that is closest to you. So if you're actually just looking at the silhouette of one of these birds, you would not be able to tell whether it's coming or going. It's only once you get the details of the bird in there, um, sort of showing how the body overlaps with that, that you can tell whether it's coming or going. So just you know, as, as a quick little example of this, here we go. Let's say I have a bird drawing that is like this. Here's my bird drawing. Here's my, my bird body. And it's got a little bird head on it. It's got a little boxy zone out here. It's got tail feathers. It's going to have wings that are coming in here. And there are secondary and uh, secondary feather zones. There's going to be a primary feather zone out here. All right. So from this little bird mock-up here, there's nothing about this that says coming towards you or going away from you at this point. Let me prove that. Let's make it come towards us. Right? So if it's coming towards us, my head is going to be here. And you're going to see its belly coming down in here. It's going to have this wing here. And it's going to have this wing here. And covert feathers on this side, you'll get to see where the axillaries are up in here and covert feathers going out like that. All right, so that and there's, there's a little eye on the side of the head. So you see this bird, it's coming towards you. However, If I'm looking down on the bird, I am seeing it's a bird here. It's going to actually have some scapular feathers in here on the back on both sides. It's going to have a head. It's going to have secondaries here, primaries. A very sloppy wing over there. <laughs> um, and look at this, if right in here, if I kind of just say, all right, yeah, your wing is attaching here on the side of your body, all right? That, now this one is going away from you. It was that same frame. Bow, chicka, bow. Isn't that cool? So, we've got foreshortening. We've got the angle of the bird. And now, we are ready to 
really um, ratchet this up. This next little detail is a really wonderful game changer on how you draw um, these, 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 these birds. Actually, actually, before we do that, let's just, let me go back to one moment. Let me get these angle birds here. And what I'd like to do is jump over to the document camera again. And what we're gonna do is take a look at the paper model. So the paper model, the nice thing about it is that it's not going to fly away. And you can pose it in all sorts of different positions to, to, to help you think about what you're seeing. So let's look at it here. Um, we're talking about a bird that is coming towards you and at an angle, right? So if I look at this bird in terms of this model, notice that the axis of the head and the axis of the body do not make right angles, all right? If I turn it so that it is straight, coming, whoops, there we go, coming straight at you, yes, here you see a 90 degree angle. But all I have to do is turn it off to the side, and, those, those angles are no longer 90 degrees. Now, oh yeah, so somebody said it seems upside down on my screen. Let me see if I can flip this. Uh, yeah, that's a little bit better. Thank you. A little bit less Confusing there, right? So I want to just experiment with holding my paper model at different angles. And the reason we have the paper model is that we draw, we actually draw the paper model from different angles as part of our practice. So what I do is I take that little model and I turn it around different angles and I look for these different phenomenons. I, I want to see, like, can I visualize these different angles of, 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 of where your body is, where your wings are? Can I hold up my little bird and, and see that? So far, we're dealing with a bird that is holding its wings perfectly flat. Thing is, the raptors aren't gonna do that. So we're gonna make a little tweak now, and you see that it actually makes a huge, this one little tweak makes an incredible visual difference in what you see. And this little trick that we're about to see this is, this is a major thing that I got wrong in all of my first field guides. Wish I had known this before, but I didn't, all right? And what we're gonna do is if you have your little, your little model, um, you're going to just take, we'll do it on this side because I cut out the wingtips. You're gonna take the wingtips and write Right along here, you're just going to fold it up slightly so that the wing tip goes up at the end. Up at the end. And exactly. there it seems like people are having issues seeing your video. So if you could turn off your video and turn it back on again, maybe they'll get it back. Oh, um, stop my video. And stop my video again. You see me now? How do you like me now? 
I think that How you like me now? We're, we're back? Yep. All right, we are back. <laughs> we're back with the jack cam. All right, so what I did is I just took the tip of the wing and I, you know, there's a faint little dotted line along there. And I fold it along that so that the tip of it goes up. Now this makes a huge difference. Let's start with the paper model, then we'll look at the real birds and see what goes on. Um, and the, um, again, it doesn't have to be a, a tight fold. You can kind of roll it up. So there's, there's my bird. And you notice mine has wing tips that are flat, but look at this. I'm gonna take this one, fold it up. I'm gonna take this one, fold it up. All right, you're saying this, this doesn't make that much of a difference. Sure, we see the bird coming towards us now. Let me see if I can get it so that it looks, oh no, that's, all right, so there's a bird coming. Uh, nope, wrong way. There we go. All right, put this around one more time. All right, there it is. So bird coming towards you, yes, the wingtips are up. But where this becomes really interesting is when I turn it over to the side and do this. Look at those two wingtips. Look at this one and look at this one. What's the difference? So here, because these wingtips are tipping away from me, I can't see those fingered wingtips anymore. Whoa. It looks like somebody came along with scissors and just went snip. And up here, I can see them perfectly well. Now, let's turn it where we're looking at the back of the bird. So if I am looking at the back of the bird, along this wingtip here, you see these fingers are flipped up towards you. That means that the bottom edge of this is a sharp cut. And the top edge here, where these ones are flipped up, I can see them. So with wingtips up, when I'm looking at the bird from an angle, either the top or the bottom, so just not this view, but all these other views here, you get this dramatic change in the wingtips. I remember, I think it was, I was looking at a field guy drawing, I think it was by Bruce Pearson, and there were these wingtips drawn like that. And I was like, what, what are you, why are you, why didn't you draw, what's up with that weird wing on the back? It looked wrong to me. And then I looked at a real bird and was doing that. I went, oh, surprise, surprise. So that's, you drew that because that's the way it really looks. But just how counterintuitive is that? Because we spent like, oh, there are these cool fingers. So you draw the cool fingers on both sides. But you flip those up. You don't see them on one side. My mind was blown. All right. So can you see me now? Me with blown mind. Yes, yes, good. All right, let's go over to some photographs and look at photographs of birds doing this because this is gonna, this is, you make your birds look like real birds. They're flying around in the air. This is just a good thing when you're trying to drop birds flying around in the air. Here we are. Now, got this crazy angle thing going on. Now we've got wing tips up. Now, 
So let's, let's look carefully at this. On the bottom picture, you can see this bird's going away from us. And you can see the wingtips on both sides flipping up, right? Almost a back view. If you've got a bird model, my challenge for you is to hold that bird model at such an angle that you can see the same thing. It's going away from you, narrow, foreshortened wings, and you can see those wingtips up on either side. Now, let's take a look at the two stellar sea eagles with the ridiculous toucan beak, right? So by the way, when you're drawing raptors, people always tend to draw the beak too big, right? Because they have really cool beaks. The only exception to this rule is really the stellar sea eagle that looks like somebody crossed a toucan with a raptor and um, <laughs> they just have ridiculously big beaks. But just be aware of making the cool raptor beak too big on all the rest of your raptors. All right. So the ones where it, the wing is down, notice right here. Hold on a second. So notice here, there's this flat edge to the wing. Over here, there's a flat edge to the wing. Wings that are down below the body, flat edge. Now, look at this one here. Wing that is down below the body. Here's these cool fingering tips here. Somebody's come along and snipped those off on the one that is down below the body. Let's take a look at this one here. Two wings down below the body. This one here, it looks like somebody came by and snipped it there, and somebody came by and snipped this here. Why aren't I seeing that cool proper fingering? On all of these cases, the wing that is down below the body has the snip effect. Whether it's both wings or just one. And that can either be the near wing snipped. This one is snipped here because these feathers are flipping up towards you. These ones are snipped because they're flipping up away from you. Both of those on the downside. But on the wing that is up, full fancy primaries. On both wings, if they're both up, or one wing. That, so, so here's, let's, let's put all this together now, right? So we have a bird, and it is going to be hanging, uh, flying at, at, at an angle, right? So here is, here's my body. And um, for this, the secondaries, here's just kind of another little neat little detail here. Um, let's say my line of my secondaries starts here on this one. I'm going to go the same distance from kind of the center line of my bird out here, not from the edge of the belly. So I'm not going to go this distance down here, right, and put that over here. I'm going to go from the where the center of the back of the bird would be because part of this bird's belly is blocking part of my view of that wing. So it's going to look like I've got less wing on this side, on the downhill side. Let's draw this one from the underside. All right, so here is, here are my wings, one wing up here. Here's this other wing over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to snip and trim this lower wing. So
my body, center line of my bird, somewhere about in there. But on this side over here, I'm going to come and I am going to just trim along this edge. I can just draw a flat edge. And as I get into here, I'm going to start to show some of these lower, um, yeah, the, right in here, like that, All right? Um, you're going to see some of those lower primaries. They're shorter. They don't flip as much, but the top one gets flipped. And over here, I get to draw in my full primary feather action. Now, I'm also not going to put the feet right on the center line. I'm not going to draw, here's the box. I'm not going to draw a little symmetrical, like I've got a little bird foot coming in here and another bird foot coming right here. Because I've got this foot coming in here and the other one kind of disappearing over on the side here. So I'm also thinking that my legs, the center of where my legs are, are going to be somewhere on the mat. So little foot hanging down there. But this, this little effect just, you know, it is strange. And when you first start doing this, it won't look right. You'll be like, ah, oh, that just, that is so wrong. I, you know, my primaries, my primaries, my kingdom for my primaries. Um, but just start looking for the snip on real birds. And once you start seeing it on real birds flying around, then you'll be like, okay, I can do this. I can let that go. All right? That's the cool wingtips up thing. Really, really neat little effect. Now, let's jump back to the paper model because we're going to make another, uh, our second to last adjustment on it. All right, you see what we're doing here? We're starting with some basic structure and then we're just, there are these layers of subtleties that for me, at least, are counterintuitive, right? I, I don't expect you know, things like the wingtip thing. And if I were to make up, you know, my understanding of perspective and foreshortening, um, I need a little model in my hands. Or I need the, the real thing looking at me because there are these, there are these counterintuitive things. And once I see it on my paper model, then I can see it on my bird. And that makes, that makes a big difference, right? You ready for this? Let's go back to the paper model. What we're going to be doing is at the start, our paper model. Here we go. Here is our paper model. And are we upside down again? Yep, we're upside down again. We are now, nope, uh, we are, no, there we are. All right, let's zoom in on that a little bit. Or not. All right, so this, this paper model, the wings are just flat out. Sometimes you see a bird will go flying around like this, like a, a bald eagle, sometimes you'll see them flying around and it looks like somebody just took a big board and nailed it across the bird's back it's just really flat. But a lot of birds have what's called a dihedral, and that can be subtle or dramatic. A dihedral is when the wings are up in a V. Everybody knows, you know, V for vulture. Um, so turkey vultures will hold their wings up in a, in a V. Um, Northern harriers will typically take this posture. But a lot of birds, you know, even a, you know, a, you know, a, a red-tailed hawk, We'll sometimes see just a little bit, a little bit of an angle like that. And on others, it's more dramatic. All right, so what is the impact of putting the V in the wings 
This gets really cool. All right, so let's just start with the bottom view. All right, and let's get you lined up here. All right, and all right, so there's the bottom view. Now, watch this. I rotate the bird. This wing becomes shorter. This wing actually becomes longer. Because in this view, it's tilted away from you. It's tilted down away from your, your, your view. So when I rock it this way, it is now perpendicular to your plane of sight. That wing just became longer. Isn't that neat? So your two wings are not going to be the same length. And look at that far away one, all trimmed down like that. That we totally lost, it got shorter and we lost all the primaries. Just realized if I put this on a dark surface, it'll be even easier for you to see. So let's do that. There we go. There we go. All right. So look at that. That back wing, it is, it just got shorter. And that's, that's what it does if we are keeping things just in this 90 degree plane here. But, and maybe what we'll do is we'll, we'll take a look at some photographs of this. Oh, actually, let's, let's turn it this way. Now, you're looking at the back of the bird, and we see the far wing. Let's see if I turn this, like this will be in a more, there we go. Uh, no, I think I'm gonna have to do it this way so that we get the wing tips in. But check out that, check out that birdie there. So this far wing, we are getting, we're seeing the fingers, we're seeing the long plane of the wing. This close one is shortened. It's getting snipped and clipped at the end. And I have the bigger bulge appearing here on the back side of my secondaries. That feels more bulgy out. This feels more parallel side. Tilt it a little bit more. Now, we're going to return to our share uh, screen. We'll look at some photographs. Hey Jack, really quickly, one of the questions from the audience kind of relates to that. Um, will the birds, um, so the question from Stephanie Harlan was, do the birds always sort of flap their wings in unison and are they always sort of mirrored? Um, so in sort of regular flapping, um, they will be symmetrical. However, when they are, when they're closing it, like, like do, um, uh, just give yourself a, the, do yourself the, the privilege of like, do, uh, type into a Google search, slow motion video of goshawk flying and make these slalom courses for goshawks and have them go through it. And you'll see that in flight, okay, but then when they are trying to do a maneuver, they'll, they can do all sorts of things with their wings. So when they're, they're, they're kind of moving around an object, you'll, you'll, you'll see all sorts of weird dynamic wing positions that are, that are, that are, that are asymmetrical. But generally, as you're kind of soaring, or regular flapping, you're keeping it symmetrical. 
So let's take a look at these two photographs over there. All right. Um, the top one, we see, we see a bunch of these um, cool effects. So here is, here's the big bulge. Right. Here's the snip. All right, and what about over here? Here is a little bit less of a prominent bulge, and we're seeing the fingering in those. We're seeing one side big, we're seeing one side small. And these birds are basically going at a right angle to your field of view. So not coming towards you, not going away from you. Same thing, exactly the same thing going on over here. These ones snipped, these ones fingered, these ones longer, this one shorter. So if I am um, drawing this, I'm going to have the wing that is close to me here. That's going to be really short. It's going to be clipped. And the one that is further away from me, I'm going to see that one with a full fan. This one also is going to insert on the side of the body so that my head So that's that's our sort of side side view Oh, let's put let's put a little one other thing in here, just uh, for for giggles. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of a sort of a sense of a V on the back of, of this bird here, right in this zone. You've got what are called the scapular feathers, and um, those. Um, there's the center line. Um, sort of as you're bringing your wing into the body. You notice over here on the left hand side, that top picture, this bird's scapular feathers are right in there. Big dark lump, big parallel dark lump in there. So you get a little bit of a nice sort of <coughs> birdie got back um, moment there. That's helps you sort of uh, tuck the wing up underneath that. So that's for the straight side view. But now, let's take a look at what this angle does when the bird, hold on a second. Um, is coming towards you, all right? So I've got, I've got two birds here, they're coming towards me. And there's, there's a strange thing that I want you to notice about this picture. And this again, it's another kind of counterintuitive 
counterintuitive thing. Um, here is this wing. And I want you to look at how thick it is. What I would tend to want to do is to this, this distance here from this point to this point, I would want to make this one over here be exactly that same thing, right? I would want to kind of, you know, just if, that, if I see this distance here, I'm gonna make it that distance over here. But for some reason, this looks a lot skinnier across here. And as I look at this little one up in the corner, look at that, and then look at that. What's going on here where the width of this wing seems to be different on these two birds? Okay. The answer is hiding over on our little paper model. So there's our sort of weird observation. What I like to do is to sort of find something that's kind of like, huh, that just doesn't look right, right? And then, I, because sometimes birds will just hold their wings in a weird position, me, right? Um, but I start to see this consistently across a lot of pictures. What's, what's happening with that? Well, I'm glad you asked. What we're gonna do, is again we've got our bird we're going to have the wings up in a v and we are going to look at them all right let's swing this around so the bird's not upside down there we are all right we've got the birds it's got dihedral wings by the way that that, that it's called a dihedral when you get uh the wings up in a v Look at this. So if I keep this body 90 degrees to you and I spin it, right, then you just get one wing turning big, one wing, wing, wing being big, one wing being small. But it gets a lot more interesting if I turn the bird at an angle and then rotate it. Look at this back wing and how much skinnier it is. And look at if I can hold it here. Look at what just happened to the width of that back wing. You see that? Look at that. So when they're at a dihedral and they are at an angle, you can get one of them foreshortened and the other one not. So that this one, you're looking at this wing just as a skinny little angle here on this close one. But would, would you want to draw that back one as a, um, as something that had the same width as, as, as this? But let's see what just, what, what happened there. Let's just follow that from here Right, same, same. Now, it's get, you can see it's gotten a little bit skinnier. Now it's gotten a little bit skinnier. And what you're doing is you're turning it till you get to the edge of the paper. Right? And then you turn it a little bit more. It's now coming back, getting wider, and the other one is getting skinny. All right, so here, you know, I can have it so one is skinny and one is wide. This makes for some, I have drawn so many drawings of these birds with their wings flying with perfect symmetry on those two wings and completely missed this little point. So this is why we need the paper model. And by the way, making your paper model, if you can put a heavier cardstock into your printer, do it. 
Um, this one is a little bit heavier cardstock. I find when I make this out of regular paper, they're just a little bit too floppy, right? But out of cardstock, you can hold it in a position and look at it. Similarly, if you can have, make some sort of a rack where you can set your model into it and then watch that, it allows you to hold it steady, be able to draw it from that position, hold it steady, be able to draw it from that, that position. So look at that back wing, right? From being full, that front one here, skinny. I'm gonna keep turning it around. Now I've got front one full, back one skinny, back one. I mean, this is such, if you draw the bird like this, here's what's gonna happen. Somebody is going to look at it and say, oh, you drew that wrong. You don't understand foreshortening, right? You don't understand, you know, kind of perspective. Um, those should, or, or, or basics of construction, of a constructed drawing. Because it just looks wrong. It looks like that, that back one, right, is, it looks wrong. So what I want to do is I want to look at these enough so that this starts to look right to me. Let's also look at the angles that these wings, as it's coming forward, as it's coming towards me at an angle, notice that one wing is, um, is behind the head, one wing is going up in front of the head. As it's coming towards me here at these angles, that farther wing is coming forward. The other wing is going up. Now, as I turn this around, um, my little armature is getting stuck. So, Let's, let me show you a couple of, of photographs. Um, let me, uh, oh, so people want to know, like, uh, yes, I'm using a, a, a model. It's free. Go to my website, johnmuirlaws.com. You can also go to a link that is at the start of this chat. You can make your own models. It is, it's, um, it's, it's groovy. Paper model. Um, we, now, we did let, have a couple of questions also asking about that clamp you're using to hold up the model. Oh yeah, this thing is groovy. Um, my dad used this for tying flies, and it even has a magnifying glass attachment. Right, and um, he would uh, uh, for fly fishing. He would he would use this. So um, or so it, it's uh, it's it's made for just holding one thing still and magnifying it. And that, um, ah, it's called a third hand. Oh, nice. So I love this community. Isn't it neat? Like somebody asked a question, all these great answers pop up. Um, let me jump back to the screen share. And we're gonna take a look at these birds coming towards us, right? So now, now we look at this and go like, oh yeah, this, these angles, this is just like what I was seeing on the paper model. Look, there's, there's that one full, there's that one coming out and I'm seeing that little, um, there's, there's the skinny part coming out. Um, this one, it's, they're, they're coming back to, they're about to switch. This one is gonna start getting, if it keeps turning towards me, this one here is just gonna get bigger and bigger. This one here is gonna get smaller and smaller. So it, it makes these, this perspective that you're seeing on those wings just start to make a little bit more sense. All right. We have Look about at, eight minutes left, by the way. Oh, how does that happen to time? Um, so here it is, same thing going the other way. Isn't that fun? But there's also this bonus thing that we get here with the hook. The hook. Check out the hook. So the hook. Um, is 
if we have these last pri first primaries flipped up on the side that is coming towards us here, um, on these birds that are sort of flying away like this, you can, you can get this really kind of cool hook effect. And my challenge for you is if you have the paper model, can you hold your paper model in a position that gets this hook effect? And again, just look at how much skinnier this wing is, how much skinnier this wing is, how much skinnier this wing is than that one that's in the back. That's, a, for me, a great example of stuff I would not expect. And, and the reason I'm pointing this out is the, the, the people will, will say, well, just draw what you see. Um, and... If I could, I would. But I find very often that, well, first of all, having an understanding of some structure helps me draw this, right? So understanding, okay, those are my primaries. I expect them to fan. Those are my secondaries. I expect them to be parallel. Then I'm expecting those to be covered with covert feathers. That kind of structure helps me draw it. But I also have these ideas in my head of the way that things should look the sorts of angles that I should be able to see. And very often, my mental models of the way that the world should be are different than reality. And so what I want to do is notice where things look weird. And so if something looks weird, right, I want to lean into that and kind of go like, ah, oh, what's up with that? Play with it until I understand it. Because once I understand it, it's much easier for me to be able to say, like, I'm going to draw a, a, a bird here, and it's going to have one wing that is coming out here. It's going to have another wing that is coming out here. This one, I'm going to know I'm going to have fanning here. This one here, okay, it's going to be the hook. To be able to to, to, to freehand something like that, that's going to take, that's going to take an understanding of the structure and the geometry that goes beyond Jack's sort of simplistic way of thinking of the way that the world works. I want to look at reality until I can find these anomalies, figure out what's behind that anomaly, and once I understand it, it helps me be able to see it in the field and in a really, really quick sketch, be able to get that down. So you see a little um, thing f flying in the, 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 the sky there. You can make a drawing. And, and then you're, you're, you're moving on. So um, understanding that structure, finding those weird anomalies, that makes a huge difference. I've got one little moment left before we have to call it a wrap. According to my clock, I've got three minutes. And yeah. rather than taking a question, I want to show one more cool thing. Is that all right? Yeah. No. All right. Um, is there time for one very quick question in here? Um, there have been a couple asking if there are any considerations for the tail as we've been sort of shifting the wings. Does the tail ever sort of shorten in the same way? Uh, yeah, so cool thing about the tail. Um, uh, let me see here, so tail. Um, so from the top, the tail, you're going to see it as this symmetrical triangle. Oh, you know what? I made a little tail here. Let me get my little tail. Um, all right. I'm going to switch over to the jack cam again. Not that jack cam. This one right here. 
Hi, I'm Jack. And this is my tail. All right? Um, so um, I'm going to hold it this way. Yeah. So if the marker is the long axis of the bird, There's the bird with its tail, all right? Now, check this out. Um, you expect the tail to be symmetrical, but if the bird starts flying this way, right, this green side of the tail has become, I'm gonna tilt this up a little bit so it's not, okay, here we go. You see both of those edges. So look at this. You tilt the pen this way, the green side of the, of the piece of paper of the triangle has just become really foreshortened. And the other side, you see its full length. Um, when it's going right you know, towards you or right away from you or right overhead, you see those as being the same side, size. But when the, um, what you want to do is think of is the, um, is the close side of the tail pointing towards you more? Or is the close side of the tail, um, are you kind of looking along its, its, its side? And you don't want, so if a, a tilty bird a, or a bird flying at an angle, you are going to get one side of the tail longer than the other. So people will tend to, because you know it's this sort of triangle thing, Right, you'll draw it symmetrically, but um, if the bird is flying at an angle to your point of view, one side of that tail will be longer, the other side will be shorter. All right, so this side right here, from here, you can see it appears longer than the green side. So if I am doing this, here. That didn't work. Try it again. Um, so let's say, uh, hold on a second, a little bit of a lag. Have to wait till this little spinny goes. All right. Um, if I've got a bird and it is flying away from me and its tail is sticking down this direction, um, there's going to be a long side and a short side. This side over here is going to be turned more towards me and is going to, uh, oops, more towards me and will appear shorter. This side over here is going to appear longer. Um, so, let's see. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, I've got my, my, my sort of, my tail becomes this asymmetrical Triangle as I as I wrap that up over my bird. So watch those tail sides. Now all that the angle between the back of the wings here and here are going to be different. So this is often a very useful negative space to look into for your birds. And the final piece, the final piece is that so far, our birds have been keeping their wings flat. And at the wrist where the primaries and feather, secondaries hit, they can change the angle of the wings. Enter 
your gall model. And what I'm going to suggest you do is, um, let's see, stop share. On your gall model, this is a really um, useful place to I'm going to take this and tilt it. I'm going to take this one and tilt it right there at the wrist. So that from the front, I've got sort of that classic M symbol. Now, when you hold your gall in position, let's flip this around so we don't have upside down gall. Look at that. Isn't this surprising? You can have one surface very foreshortened and the other one not, right? Or surfaces foreshortened to different degrees. So if this wing is up like this, I can see I can get one big, one small. Or the whole thing is rocked down like this, right? I can, now I'm just seeing this surface here and the secondaries. I'm, I'm, I'm not, let me put a colored piece of card under here so you can see the shape of that. Um, so with a bend in the wing, the what your birds can do becomes much more interesting and also can be a little bit more challenging. So look at this one here. I'm going to tilt this up a little bit. So here I'm seeing some of both of these surfaces. On the far side, I'm seeing the top of my secondaries kind of coming out to a point and I'm seeing none of the primaries because they are pointing away from me. If I take my bird and I tilt it towards me a little bit more and I flop this down and I flop this down. You can get different degrees of the tops or the bottoms of these different surfaces showing up. So I recommend that people start with the hawk and keep the hawk's wings flat and then move over to the gull and make the gull's wings bend and um, well, first just do gall flat, but then bend the gall's wings and eventually do hawk with the bend in the wings. So let me just um, me show you some photograph. And your, your, that's right. So your, your homework, your challenge, should you choose to accept it, we just want to take these ideas and play with them. All right. So notice, notice here we have... Um, we saw this exact pose down here on the bottom, right? We saw this pose, right? There's the block here and there's a triangle there. And there's that little section of the secondaries just poking out above there. Find a photograph and move your paper model to the same position. Try to pose your model like the photograph. And then draw the model and draw the photograph. And what you want to do is you want to fill five sketchbook pages with little drawings of hawks flying different poses. However many you want to put on each page is totally up to you, but you want five different pages. So that could be five hawks flying around. And then, um, or you could have some of these just start with little wireframes and have a bunch of little sketches of those and then one or two on one page where you're going to kind of work them out even more. 
you can, if you're a go-getter, cram as many birds in flight into each of those pages as you can. And um, where you can, on one of those pages, you know, you might try, um, you know, just try a different aspect of these uh, four shortening challenges. Don't lead with the bent wing one, right? Because that is some pretty, that's kind of crazy making. But build up to this. Build up to this so that your last, on your last page, you're messing also with the bent wing and, and, and how that foreshortens. You've got, you have your, where's my, remember these little models are your friends and playing with this will help make the foreshortening on birds in flight intuitive to you. If you pack five pages with these little diagrams, this will become intuitive to you. It will be funky and weird at the start, but by the end of those five pages, you're gonna look at a bird with a weird forward shortening angle with this weird wing getting narrow over there and then coming into a hook, and you'll be like, you know what, the geometry of that makes sense to me. That makes sense to me, and I can draw this. You can draw this, you can do this. So I wanna encourage everybody, fill up those five pages, we have a special hashtag. Um, so what is this? Drawing Birds 2020? Draw Birds 2020. Um, Draw Birds, singular. Yes. And Draw um, Birds. Very quickly, I see a couple of people saying that the book is out of stock on your website, Jack. Um, is there a wait list um, the, or anything the, in the works for the, that? The Drawing Birds. So, yeah, we will get those pronto from um, Heyday. Um, they've been um, very good to us at, at sort of uh, getting things in. Um, and if you buy it from me, it makes a huge difference to me and my family because then I make the margin instead of Jeff Bezos. So please do consider that. Um, also, donations that are made on my website go directly to support me. If you've enjoyed this class, please do consider making a donation to support me and my family. I offer a weekly free nature drawing and journaling classes. If you enjoyed this one, you kind of got a feeling for it. You can join any of those um, and your donations help support those. Your donations also help support the Audubon Society, which is an awesome organization doing great nature education like this class and conservation work um, across the country and around the world. So uh, we want to support our, I, I really want to also encourage people to support your um, your local chapter of the Audubon Society. This one is sponsored by the Richardson Bay chapter of the Audubon Society. So you make a donation to them. They do all sorts of awesome work here in the Bay Area and I love them over there. So they will like that too. Um, but um, if, if, if funding is difficult for you right now, don't worry about that. Go make art. Use art as, as to, to, to kind of connect with the world in this crazy time of COVID. And, and, and don't worry about, um, uh, about money. Similarly, if you're watching this and you need that book on how to draw birds and you can't afford it, just shoot me an email. We can work something out that'll work for you. And um, the, I want to encourage people to make art go out into nature, celebrate birds, celebrate life in this strange time of COVID. Be safe, be kind, take care of each other. Don't listen to people who want to divide you from other people, but find reasons to find unity with other people in your community, other people around the world, and with nature itself. Um, the more that we work together, that's what's going to help us lift ourselves out of the despair and the depression of this time of COVID. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you for your support of the Audubon Society and uh, for the, the, the work that I do. I really hope you got some uh, fun tips out of this class. Uh, it was great to be here with you. Um, Hamar and uh, folks at Richardson Bay, thank you folks for the work that you are doing. Thank you so much, Jack. And um, just a quick update, we have word that the book is back in stock. So you can pick up the book from Jack's website. All of this will go out to you in an email. 
thank you everybody so much for participating in this class. It has been wonderful to have this community come back together. You're all wonderful. And um, it's just so great, as Jack is saying, to have this community of people connecting around drawing birds and, you know, finding some way to make levity of the times. So um, if you want to get more involved in the community, there are many ways you can, signing up for our email lists, all, you know, checking out our websites, all of that. But um, yeah, we're just really glad to have more people getting involved in birds and in art and um, enjoying nature. So thank you, everybody.